While finishing up my unpolished reflection on abortion and euthanasia, I began reading a collection of the Marquis de Sade's work. In my reflection, I poorly explained that while I may be burying myself alive under the crushing weight of debt and discrimination, and that my true preferences would be to die or withdraw entirely from society to spare the world of my toxicity, I do feel an obligation to find ways to share with the world as long as I choose to be a part of it. I have adapted one of Saad's philosophical dialogues, his 1782 dialogue between a priest and a dying man, into a 24-minute monologue. I've done that poorly, like I do everything else. The editors of the Marquis de Sade, Justine, Philosophy in the Bedroom, and other writings. I know, it's mirrored for you, you'll be okay. Um, consider this to be one of his tamest works. I struggle severely with memorization and with staging my space for skit filming um, on any reasonable timeline, so I will read. I'm also a technophile, currently quite creeped out by technology due to some personal experiences that compound the general tech gets creepier as we age trend. Uh, between that and working with old technology under frustrating constraints, I am again choosing to deliver this piece underprepared and unnecessarily divided into parts. So here comes part one of three, looking at your eyes, not mine. And my skeleton buddy is courtesy of, not courtesy, you, this is not a sponsored video, I don't do sponsored anything. Um, but he was procured from CVS. So, that's where he's from. Sing in me, Divine Marquis, the song of the dying man, visited by a priest. I told him, I told him that I repented. He heard me say it, yes, <laughs> but without understanding it. Hold, I shall give you my interpretation of repenting. <laughs> By nature created, created with very keen tastes, with very strong passions, placed on this earth for the sole purpose of yielding to them and satisfying them, and these effects of my creation being naught but necessities directly relating to nature's fundamental designs, or, if you prefer, naught but essential derivatives proceeding from her intentions in my regard, all in accordance with her laws. I repent not having acknowledged her omnipotence as fully as I might have done. I am only sorry for the modest use I made of the faculties, criminal in your mind, perfectly ordinary in mine, she gave me to serve her. I did sometimes resist her, I admit it. I repented, rather. Misled by your absurd doctrines, with them for arms, I mindlessly challenged the desire, the desires instilled in me by a much diviner inspiration, and thereof do I repent. I only plucked an occasional flower when I might have gathered an ample harvest of fruit. Such are the just grounds for the regrets I have. Do me the honor of considering me incapable of harboring any others. Friend, it seems to me his dialectic was as false as his thinking. Ha! Pray, straighten your arguing, or else leave me to die in peace. What do you mean by creator? And what do you mean by corrupted nature? An impressive figure indeed, an omnipotent master of the universe. Tell me now why this so very formidable fellow did nevertheless, as you would have it, create a corrupted nature. So your God bungled his work 
deliberately in order to tempt or test his creature? Did he then not know? Did he then not doubt what the result would be? And to what purpose? Since from the outset he knew the course affairs would take, and since almighty oh, as you tell me he is, he had but to make his creature choose as suited him. Who is there can penetrate God's vast and infinite designs regarding man? Anyone who simplifies matters, my friend. Anyone. Above all, who refrains from multiplying causes in order to confuse effects all the more. What need have you of a second difficulty when you are unable to resolve the first? And once it is possible that nature may all alone have done what you attribute to your God, why must you go looking for someone to be her overlord? The cause and explanation of what you do not understand may perhaps be the simplest thing in the world. Perfect your physics and you will understand nature better. Refine your reason. Banish your prejudices. And you'll have no further need of your gods. Softly, my friend. Own that between the two, he who blindfolds himself must surely see less of the light than he who snatches the blindfold away from his eyes. You compose, you construct, you magnify and complicate. I sim, I simplify. You accumulate errors. Pile one atop the other. I combat them all. Which one of us is blind? No, I do not believe in any gods. And for one very sound reason. It is perfectly impossible to believe in what one does not understand. Between understanding and faith, immediate connection must subsist. Understanding is the very lifeblood of faith. Where understanding has ceased, faith is dead. And when they who are in such a case proclaim they have faith, they deceive. You yourself, preacher, I defy you to believe in the God you predicate to me. You must fail because you cannot demonstrate him to me. Because it is not in you to define him to me because consequently you do not understand him. Because as of the moment you do not understand him, you can no longer furnish me any reasonable argument concerning him. And because, in sum, anything beyond the limits and grasp of the human mind is either illusion or futility. And because your God, having to be one or the other of the two, in the first instance, I should be mad to believe in him. In the second, a fool. My friend, prove to me that matter is inert and I will grant you a creator. Prove to me that nature does not suffice to herself and I'll let you imagine her ruled by a higher force. Until then, expect nothing from me. I bow to evidence only. And evidence I perceive only with my senses. Through, only through my senses. My belief goes no farther than they. Beyond that point, my faith collapses. I believe in the sun because I see it. I conceive it as the focal center of all the inflammable matter in nature. Its periodic movement pleases, but does not amaze me. It is a mechanical operation, perhaps as simple as the workings of electricity. 